Be Paul to the podium. Hey guys, Oli's at the podium. Yeah. Let's get started, Vic. What do you got Let's for me? Chargers with the biggest challenge with their defense. Obviously, it's, uh, for them, it's been their rushers, and uh, Ingram is a premier, you know, pass rusher in this league. We we'll have to uh, obviously count for him on every snap. They did. Great job in uh, young draft pick and Derwin James. Uh, but defensively, overall, they, they'll provide a, a real challenge for us. Just Bradley, his scheme far more straightforward than what you guys just faced last week? Uh, yeah, I, I would say just it's not, you don't see as many exotic pressures uh, that you have to prepare for when you're preparing for Greg Williams. But uh, it's obviously uh, been a very successful defensive scheme throughout the league. A number of teams uh, have copied uh, that blueprint of the Seattle. Uh, defense and uh, Gus has uh, done a great job with it. Obviously, uh, they're running it in uh, Jacksonville, and uh, he's taking it over in San Diego. And has done a great job with it. Before this past game, you guys really hadn't had the opportunity to work with a short field on offense. You guys had three chances late in the game. You're able to convert all three into points, two touchdowns. How integral was that, just collectively to provide those opportunities, and then to take advantage of them? Well, it was big, and it was a uh, you know, coach had emphasized it last week. Uh, the field position and where we had been in the first three games. And uh, so I think just the emphasis of trying to create turnovers defensively as well as uh, the kicking game providing us a uh, better field position and, and uh, hit it on both ends. Brandon Parker, he's made it clear he'd only played left tackle in college. How raw was he when he got here when you had to move him to the right side and how much has he progressed since he uh, I think like any rookie, you know, it is a big transition going from uh, college to the NFL and certainly from a smaller school like he did. Uh, but he showed some things at the Senior Bowl that our scouts recognized and the coaches recognized. And uh, so we knew he had the talent level uh, to play here at this level. But uh, there's always a transition, I think, from college to the NFL. And, uh, you know, we're happy with where he's at right now, but he still has a ways to go as well. How did you assess the way he played against the Browns? You know, he stepped in and, and, and did a good job, you know, having to replace Donald Penn, who'd, who'd been a Pro Bowl tackle uh, and had made the move for us. Uh, but he had a lot of help with the other guys inside. I think, uh, you know, um, the rest of the players uh, felt comfortable. Derek certainly felt comfortable with him playing the right side, and, and we felt comfortable with him as a staff. So they did a good job. Your offensive line battled, has battled physically through a number of ailments. Colton Fletchy finished the game despite the knee injuries. Rodney and Gabe have been dealing pretty much all season with what they've had. What have you just made from a grit standpoint from those? Yeah, it, it's a man's sport. We say that, and that's a man's position playing it inside. I think we've got great leadership with our uh, three inside players uh, specifically, and in, in, uh, the, the uh, you know Gabe and Kalichi, and uh, you know just the inside three for us. Uh, and you look at where. You know, where we put a lot of our money up front, uh, we expect leadership from those guys. So um, we're getting that from them, and I think that there's a certain amount of uh, peer pressure, you know, from one man to another to, to play, to know the difference between injury and pain and, and to play with some pain. And it's gonna, that's required at the offensive line position. Is that something you guys scout for, just in terms of tough well, players who understand that difference? Yeah, I think those are questions that are asked of college coaches. It certainly is the, the you know, grade the toughness of a player. And I think, you know, really it's that way at every position in the NFL. I, from wide receivers to quarterbacks, you've got to be tough to play this game and, and to play for any length of time in this game. Uh, and that's, a big, that's the big difference, in my opinion, from uh, college to the, the NFL. It, it really is a man's sport at every position. What is a, a rookie no longer a rookie? And do you guys have to speed that up this week with two rookie tackles? Yeah, I know, uh, you know, coach had mentioned it to him after after game three. So I would say probably after game three, you know, a lot of guys say uh, after you play a 12 game schedule, it, you know, that's it. Uh, you just got another college schedule. You're now in the NFL. You're playing beyond a uh, 12 game schedule. But uh, different guys mature at different uh, a different pace. Uh, but, you know, if they're playing right now, that they're, they're no, you know, we those guys next to him expecting to play like a veteran. So. Uh, once you get in that starting lineup, you got to play and you got to produce and you got to produce at a high level. Two guys have been in the league for over a decade, Marshawn and Jared Cook. What have you made of just their, their starts and how they, uh, they keep it You up? know, those guys, uh, and you guys have watched it as well. You know, they're exciting players. They bring great energy uh, to the rest of the team on both sides of the football, just in their style of play and the toughness at which they play. Uh, 
and so you know we're very encouraged of where they're at. Certainly, they don't they don't play like a player that's. I mean, they play in terms of their uh, high level of play, but usually you, you see guys at that age starting to slow down a little bit. But we're we're real excited about both where those guys are at in terms of their legs and their strength uh, and how they're playing right now. Looks like uh, Drew might break the passing record this week. You guys go way back with him. Yeah. You'll be able to watch on Monday night. Either. Yeah, we'll, we'll be watch. obviously we'll uh, certainly be preparing. It's got a short week. Uh, for us, so uh, we'll be preparing. But uh, you know, he's a you know he's a great player. He's a great college player. Certainly, he's been a great NFL player, and just real happy for him and his family. And uh, it's it's fun to watch. But it's good to see it happen to good people, and he's a good person as well. So that's it. Marshawn, every running back has his own running style. His is decidedly unique. What do you, what, what do you think he runs the way he runs? He is extremely unique. We we pointed out a play to our team where he got hit about a yard from the sideline and uh, it kind of bounced the defender off of him and, and he was literally a foot away from the sideline, could have easily stepped out of bounds but continued to drive forward and get us another two, three yards with defenders right in front of him. So uh, he's, that's the player he has always been, certainly the beast mode uh, you know, nickname that he's earned in this league. He has earned that and uh, you know, again, that's his style and uh, it's gotten to where he's at right now. And I, you know, he's not going to change that style, and we're certainly happy that he runs with that style. That whistle, like more guys. What? That whistle on that would have been a probably. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, you do not want to blow a quick whistle when Marshawn Lynch is carrying a football. Uh, I mean, we've all seen it. Great player. What does he do in terms of just keeping his body, uh, you know, able to, to run like that over the course of a, a career? Yeah, you see him. You know, he's used different things. He uses runs with bands a lot out in the practice field. You see him wears bands throughout the entire practice. You know, wrapped around his legs to try to increase his uh, lateral strength of, uh, of his legs, and uh, certainly it works for him. Uh, but you look at him; he's chiseled. Uh, certainly uh, works in a weight room. A very strong player. But uh, has tremendous lower lower uh, strength and power in the legs, and you know he's got different different training techniques. But out here, you know you'll see some of it when he wears the bands. Last one. All set. Yes. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys. All right, guys. Questions. Um, I just think he's been improving every week. He's gotten more snaps every week. You know, he's a smart guy. He understands all the calls, um, understands the grand scheme of things of the defense. So I think he's just gotten better every week. That's why he's earned more snaps. How have you seen Derek Johnson kind of take Markell under his wing and help him? Even Derek's been in the league a long time. He's seen a lot of things. And, uh, you know, just not Markell, but some of all the other players really is that, you know, he can just – his experiences in the games, playoff games, and long seasons, that uh, things that he's seen, he's shared with the players. It's always good to have guys like that, that they can do that. Because if it always comes from me or the coaches, you know, it's it's always good to hear from the players. Paul made it Daryl Morley right now that he's going to be back with you guys. Well, Daryl's a seasoned guy. I mean, he, he, you know, he was one of our best corners in the spring. And, uh, you know, when he got here in training camp, um, he's a tough guy. He understands the difference. The different techniques we're trying to teach understands the the uh, zone concepts that we teach, the man concepts concepts that we teach. So uh, it's going to be a good added piece for us, well needed piece. So what he says, he'd like to see a little bit more oomph from the defense. What, what how do you take that as far as what he's? Know, you have you have to ask him. Yeah. <laughs> You've already employed a rotation at cornerback with really your entire pack end. Yep. Three man rotation for outside corner with Rowley into the mix. How does this fit? Uh, it's going to be the same thing. I'm really trying, honestly, I'm really trying to f figure out, you know, I'd like to get a set number of guys. You know, we're really rotating a lot of guys here because we're trying to really figure out what's the best 11. But right now it's really the best 15 or 16 for us because we're trying to get everybody in there. I think, uh, you know, once somebody comes to the head of the table, then this the snaps will, will take over. But it, it'll he'll, he'll go in there just like some of the other guys with Gary and, and Melvin and um, uh, Crow and those guys are getting in there. He'll roll in with those guys as well. Have you done that in the past? In huh? the secondary, it doesn't seem like a lot of teams do that. Is that something you've done in the past? Or that um, I've done it in the past. It all depends. It all depends. The, 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 the team, the bodies, the injury situation. Um, but, um, you know, to me, it's, you know, everybody always talks about the D-line rotation. You don't ever see old linemen rotate. You never see corners rotate. Line, you know, it's always the D line. So here, it's just the corners is what we're doing, keeping everybody fresh and um, you know trying to package things for each guy. After last week, I'm a little afraid to ask you about the RP 
unnecessary roughness with the roughness yeah, quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, I said I'm not going to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's a tough deal. John made it clear on Monday that um, you guys need to cut down on the amount of big plays being yeah. allowed. Where do you see those springing from, and how do you go about preventing that? I mean, really, most of the big plays we've given up, believe it or not, we have got guys right at the point of attack. I mean, the second long run, we got a linebacker running through the free and Scott clear to the running back. And, you know, to me, it's, you know, if a guy gets through the line, you know, the safeties, the NFL safety is supposed to stop that for 12 yards. So, I mean, we got to do a good job of hemming that up and not letting that get out. You know, the, the first long run, we had a we had a blitz right into it again. And, um, you know, we just, we misfit it. We missed some tackles. The corner and the safety collided, and there it goes. So, you know, uh, we, we got to we got absolutely, that's the main focus. You know, I'm not used to giving up 42 points. I think one time, the only time I gave up 42, it was the uh, on to Cincinnati game with, uh, in Foxborough, and we, we ran into a buzz all that night. So I told those guys, I, my expectations are way higher for, than this. And, uh, we can, you know, if we can eliminate, if we can make teams go 12, 14 play drives, get them in the red zone, if that's the case, and hold them to three, that's what we got to do. But we can't give up, you know, 60 yards on the grass where we can't catch a player. So, you know, it's just a matter of angles, a matter of speed to the ball. Um, to get the guy on the ground. You mentioned the speed. Are you fast enough to get it done back there? Well, we got what we got. So, I mean, we got we to gotta do the best job with what we got right now. I think we can. I think if we can just diagnose the play a little bit sooner. And I told the guys, you know, the the margin for error for us is very minimal. So, we, we all 11 guys got to do their job. They're fit the right way and see it all through the same eyes. And those things will occur. So, I mean, it's like when we get out of place a little bit, it's it's – Ball, ball gets through there, and all of a sudden we can't get the guy on the ground. So I think it's, um, uh, like I said, the margin of error is razor thin for us. Have you seen the progress you want to see besides the big plays? Have you seen the progress you want to see on defense? The first I, I, we, we play, like I said, we've played, some, we've played as good as some good as defense, defense as well as I've been around at, in spurts. It's just, the, again, the big plays that were given up. I mean, there was, I think they said there was 12 plays, 12 or 14 plays over 12 yards. Everything else was under, and we made some big stops in that game in critical situations. Obviously, the, the turnovers helped quite a bit in there, but um, you know you get you, you got to stop them there with 30 seconds left when the game's tied, and then you got to go back out in overtime and, get, and stop them to get the ball back to the offense. So, you know, I keep telling our guys, you know, our offense is going to move the ball and score. We just got to get it back to them and not give up the long one. When you look at the how would you assess your team's quality of tackling and then also around the league? Do you think it's maybe taken a dip because of the restrictions on the defense? Um, I don't know. I can just speak on our team. You know, it's, it, it's got to get better, obviously, on the longer plays. Um, I, I didn't think it was much of a concern the first couple of ball games, really. And all of a sudden, we missed a few tackles in this last game. And, it's, you know, it's, that's the, the theme of the deal. So I, I try not to overreact to that. I just try to correct it on the film, get it practiced out here on the practice field. So hopefully it shows up on Sunday. When you look at the tape, what impressed you most about Bo Hurst? Uh, he's just getting better every week. I mean, he's uh, he's understanding the, the techniques uh, in there, and both in the run and the pass game. Um, he's a bright guy, um, bright future ahead of him. I'm really glad we have him. Uh, it's made out of wood, so you can knock on it. I asked knock the question, him. but um, four games, four three and outs to start the game. How much of that is a point of emphasis, and what do you put, what do you test that? That means we're coming out. We're prepared. We're prepared for the game, and, and you know we just hope that continues. Last last, last week it was the second half. We hadn't done real good in the first possession of the second half. It seems like every week we're getting the ball to start the game, and then we're out on defense to start to start the second half. So the last couple of weeks have been better. We just got to keep building this thing, guys, and that's that's what I keep telling the players. It's a process, and like I said, every week something's new. And until we get to that point where nothing's new, that's when things really start to click. Coach, how do you prepare for a guy like Melvin Gordon who plays physically? Oh yeah, he's a good back, good hard runner. Both backs are good backs, really. I think the other guy's leading the league in yards per carry. So. But Gordon's impressive. I played him uh, as a rookie. I took, you know, watched the tape of that game, and uh, um, and just to impress on the guys, this guy's a hard runner. When he gets to the sideline, the more violent he becomes on the sideline. So we can't, you know, it was a play the other day in the 49ers game where, you know, he's running up the sideline, and the def defenders are pulling back on him, and all of a sudden he keeps going. And you see the change of speed. I said we can't have change of speed on this guy. We got to put a hat on this guy, and all, you know, get all 11 guys to him. As a defense guy, what do you make of Marshawn Lynch? I love the guy. I tell him every week after games, I say, man, I really respect the way you play. He's a hard-running guy. I, you know, that guy, he's great to be around. He loves football. Even though you may not tell you that, I know that. I can tell. He loves playing football. He's tough. You know, he, he's, he's unbelievable to watch. I'm glad he's on my team. All right, guys. Appreciate it.